In this uh, example, we're going to be talking about left, right, Riemann sums, and we're going to be using sigma notation. So in the past, we've done this, some left and right Riemann sums, but we didn't have a lot of subintervals, so it was nice for us to just go ahead and draw a picture, do a kind of old school, figure out these uh, widths and these heights to these rectangles, and then just add up the areas. However, when we do a problem that has 40 subintervals, and you're going from zero to 25, you're not even gonna have nice um, decimal values of how the width of all these different pieces are gonna be. So it gets a little complicated. And so I don't wanna add up 40 individual numbers. I'm gonna use the idea of a summation and then have some formulas or use the calculator and um, find some quicker and better, more efficient ways to do some things. So to do that, we have a formula. It depends if you're doing a left Riemann sum and a right Riemann sum or a midpoint Riemann sum. So in general, um, what we have, on even if we go back to the visual, is we needed to find the widths times the heights and add all those areas together. So this formula is the widths times the heights add all those pieces together. So that's what this is. So this change in X is gonna be the widths. These are gonna be the heights and that's gonna give us an area and we're gonna do a whole bunch of them. So what gets tricky is this X value. This X value that you're plugging in is dictating the height. And so it's gonna be different if you have a left Riemann sum, a right Riemann sum or a midpoint. And it's gonna be very formula driven. And so we have to figure out how to make those happen. So like back here, when I did a left Riemann sum, I had a height of zero versus when I did a right Riemann sum, I had a height of uh, four, right? And so if we're doing a formula, I have to have the formula account for that, that I'm gonna have these different X values that I'm plugging in to figure out these heights. And so I need these X values. If we're doing a left Riemann sum, this X value specifically is gonna be based on this formula right here, right? And so our A value, is going to represent our left end or our left end point. So where are we starting? Um, so in this situation, we're starting at a zero, and then um, our k minus one. Um, so our k value is going to be dictated on: is this the first uh, rectangle, the second rectangle? So that's going to be your variable throughout. And then this change in x is going to be still your width. So we're going to need to figure that value out. And if you're doing a right Riemann sum, then it looks like this. If you're doing a midpoint Riemann sum, then it looks like this. Okay, so we're going to use all this to figure out what all our summations are. We got to do a little bit of work, and then eventually we're going to plug it in the calculator. All right, so stuff that we need is we need the width. So our change in our x for our problem is we are doing this equation, and we're going from 0 to 25 with 40 sub intervals. So to figure this out, we need to find the difference between where we're starting and where we're ending. So we're going to do the difference between them, which is 25 minus zero, and we're gonna divide it by 40 individual pieces. So if you do that math, you're getting a 25 divided by 40, and I don't want the fraction version, I'm gonna do the decimal version. So 0.625. So that means that is our width of every single one of our rectangles. So we're gonna have 40 rectangles with this width, but I don't know all the heights to them. And so our A value is zero. So when we start to do this and we do a left Riemann sum, we are eventually gonna do this formula, but I have to figure out what this value is. That's the trick every time. So that value is gonna be based on this formula right now. So for our left, we're gonna do um, this x k star piece, right, is going to be a plus a minus one times delta x. So our a value is x k star, our a value is zero. That's where we're starting. And then our K value is always, that is our variable. So that's the one that's gonna stay. And then times this uh, width, which our width is that on every single rectangle. So 0 0.625. So 
I'm going to go ahead. The zero is going to go away. I'm going to distribute this in. Xk star is going to equal 0 0.625k minus 0 0.625. That is this value that I'm going to be plugging in. So now we'll jump into the summation piece. We are going from 1 to 40. And, right, so we're going from 1 to 40 subintervals. And I'm just going to do f of this value that we just found. So f of 0 0.625k minus 0 0.625. Right, so then that's this value times our width. So these are the heights times 0 0.625. And then let me do a little bit of simplifying because I need to take that and plug it into this equation. So I need to sub in my X got replaced with this. So I'm looking at the square root of 0 0.625k minus 0 0.625. And that piece is going to be then multiplied by 0 0.625, but it's a summation of it. Grab a summation at the beginning. So this is what I'm going to be plugging into a calculator. k equals 1 to 40. Square root 0 0.625k minus 0 0.625, and then times 0 0.625. Okay, so that is me figuring out what my formula is, so then I can plug it into a calculator and let the calculator add up all those values. So, where is this on the calculator? So, if we go into our calculator, um, a lot of things that you have are in this math window. This is no different. So if you scroll down, um, here's your derivative, some integrals, uh, summation. If you go past it, you have that log base. So a summation is that. So that's one way to get there. Your other way to get there is this F2 has a shortcut to a lot of the big ones. So absolute values, summations, derivatives, integrals, logs, cube roots. Uh, if you're in a stats class, some probabilities and computational types of things. But we have a summation. So we don't have really a K. We're just going to put X equals a one. We're going to go to 40. And then we're going to plug in our formula. So square root of 0.625 X minus 0.625. Let's get out of the square root and then we'll times it by 0.625. All right, and that's it. Plug that in and we get a summation without us having to do all the stuff. So yeah, this is a little bit of work, but it's far better than trying to actually find all these areas of all these different rectangles and add them all together. Um, but we get an 81.6714, we'll call it. So 81.6714. And so that's the left Riemann sum. We do a right Riemann sum. Things are not going to be drastically different. It's all about this little formula right here is going to be this. So our xk star is going to be a plus k times our delta x, which is our width. Well, this one's pretty nice because our a value, we started at 0. Our k is our variable, and our width is 0 0.625. So this xk star value is equal to uh, 0 0.625k. So then we'll go into our summation. 40 k equals 1. And we're doing f of that value, 0 0.625k. Um, so we're going f of that 0 0.625k times our width. Okay, so we'll plug that in. So let me make it, let's actually plug it into this equation. 
And so then that's going to be our summation of um, 1 to 40 of square root of 0 0.625k times the width. So those are the heights, all dictated by k, 625. All right, plug that in. Let's get an answer. So same thing. Uh, shortcut F2. Go to my summation. And so I'm going from x equals 1 to 40 of the square root of 0.625x. And then outside of that, times 0.625. So I get a little bit of a different summation. So 84... 0.7964. And then we'll do the midpoint one. Okay, so for the middle, um, all right, so now the difference is we just have a little bit of a different formula and then the process will finish the same. So our x sub k star, now this one is going to be a plus k minus a half times our width. And our... Okay, so let's plug in our values. So zero plus k minus a half times 0 0.625. So I'll distribute this in, the zero is gonna go away. So I have a 0.625K and then half of that is 0 0.3125. All right, so that is this time what we're plugging in um, to our function. So we can shift now to our K equals one to 40 of F. 0 0.625k minus 0 0.3125. And then so that is that piece times our width with the 0 0.625. So again, what's it going to look like in the calculator? That is us taking the square root of this. 0 0.625 k minus 0 0.3125 all under the square root times our width 625. Okay, let's let the calculator do the math. So here we are. Do our summation of x to 1 to 40 of a square root of 0.625x minus 0.3125, and then on the outside is our width times point times 0.625. And we'll find that summation, and a middle should be probably somewhere in between the other two, so we get an 83, 83.3125. And that's probably the most accurate estimation that we can do. To be more accurate, we would do a thousand subintervals. So if we did a thousand subintervals, all of a sudden your width changed, but everything else would be exactly the same. All right. So that was using a formula. Um, the formula is hopefully it's not something you have to memorize. It could just be given to you. And then it's the process that you got to make sure that you're comfortable doing and how to throw it into a calculator.